Hey guys, and welcome back to a brand new episode of Now Showing with John and Not John. And today we are going to be doing a very special, very hard top five episode yeah. to make. Um, in one of our previous episodes, we did our top five video games basically from childhood. Now we were going to try to do our top five video games from the 2000s, which when we, me and him were both beginning to be teenagers and up. So, I have to say, out of all the lists we did so far, this was the hardest for me to put together, because... It was tricky for me, but I it wasn't the hardest. If you're going from 2000 to 2019, that's 19 years worth of video games in there, and going through here, there were so many video games I forgot that just drew me back in just thinking of them, and it was so tough to make. Now, we normally don't do a whole ton of like honorable mentions and stuff we may mention something here or i've been known in earlier episodes to do ties at number five and kind of get away with cheating <laughs> but in this episode i have to do some honorable mentions here before i do my top five because there yeah. are some video games that i've put so much time into that it was heartbreaking for me to not put them on this list so i won't spend a lot of time with these i'm sure you might have, you have some honorable yeah, mentions yeah, too. yeah i have a couple too. okay so i'll go over a few honorable mentions then i'll let john do his and then i'll start with my number five and we'll go from there so here are some games i i have to mention number one the nba 2k series in general i'm not going to limit it down to one game because <laughs> There, you know, it's a sports game every year. It's kind of the same thing, but with yeah. updates and visual updates. I've put so much time into the NBA 2K series that for me not to have it on this list was very tough not to do. Um, as a fan of basketball, and, and not just even being a fan of basketball, this is easily, in my opinion, the greatest sports series game ever made. No other company... No other sports game, whether you're talking Madden, NHL, NHL baseball. NHL, ten times better. No. But I'm just going to throw that out there. No. This is his list. No. I'll let it go. No. Look, even if you're not a fan of basketball, if you would just put on an NBA 2K game and see the not just the graphics, but how much detail they put into their games, um, the commentary, you'll be 80 games into a season, and the commentary will refer back to something you did in game 20. The career modes, all the different modes, the online, there is no game company that puts the amount of detail into NBA 2K games, so I had to mention it. Also, in another game series in general, the WWE SmackDown vs. Raw series, of course, in my heyday of watching wrestling, the SmackDown vs. Raw series, and WWE video games in general, or something every year I look forward to. The one I'll mention in particular is SmackDown vs. Raw 2006, because this was the first one to feature what was called General Manager, or GM mode, which is where you took the place of a GM, and you would draft a roster, and you could play against your friends, or even people online, and you would put together weekly shows, where you would dictate the matches, and things like that. Your superstars could get injured, you could make trades. It was the coolest game mode, in my opinion, they've ever done. It was a big cult hit, and myself, my wife, my friends, we would play this all hours of the night, so I had to mention it. Another series I have to briefly mention as a, as a notable mention, uh, and we have it up here, the Dead Space series, Dead Space 1. Um, one of the greatest sci-fi or just basically survival horror games ever made. Um, I put so much time into all three Dead Space that it would it, I wouldn't be doing justice if I didn't mention. Also, Left 4 Dead. Left 4 Dead, when that came out, revolutionized zombie game shooters playing online with friends. Uh, Dead Rising, which was, in my opinion, still to this day, one of the best Xbox original games ever made, playing as Frank West in the shopping mall, Dawn mm -hmm. of the Dead kind of feel to yeah. it, surviving against hordes of zombies. Um, Twisted Metal Black, one of the best Twisted Metal games ever made. Um, Marvel Ultimate Alliance. I can't go without mentioning this. Yeah. Even though I'm not a huge superhero fan like this guy is, I'd be lying if I didn't put a shit ton of hours into the first Marvel Alliance and even the second one. Love those games. And then the last one I'll do is an honorable mention. This is the one that was the hardest for me not to make the list. And honestly, I'm still regretting not putting it on the list right now. And that is Saints Row. Ooh. Saints Row and even Saints Row 2, but I'll just say Saints Row for, the, for this video. When that game came out, I was not only blown away, but I was so addicted. I replayed it so many times. And with part two, you can then play co-op, which took it to an even higher level. 
When this game came out, I liked it even better than the GTA series at that point. From the voice acting, to the over-the-top characters, to the crazy hysterical <laughs> storylines, to the customization of your character, and buying um, like hideouts and, and mansions, and just how fun the missions were, the songs that they had on the radio station, Saints Row is one of the funnest games I've ever played. Um, the first three. After that, I didn't care for it anymore. And this is one game I really wish they would either remake yeah. or revamp because I'd play the hell out of it. It broke my heart not to put this on the list. Um, so I had to mention it. And I know there was a lot of games right there, guys. I apologize because we're not even in the top five yet. So I'll let this guy, because I could keep going, Yeah. I'll let him uh, give some honorable mentions. All right, so um, one of my... First honorable mentions, I put a lot of time into this series, and there's one that's not part of the actual series, but I'm just going to tie it together, and that is the Tony Hawk series. Oh. Um, I put so much, like, that That game revolutionized, like, sports games. He, t he mentioned, like, NBA, but I consider this also a sports game. It is an extreme sports, but just how fun this game was when it first came out, and this is one that I felt that all of them kind of, like, stayed true they were all fun to play it didn't really lose anything you didn't even have to be a fan of skateboarding no, that's the and thing, you yeah. could just play because i wasn't but i loved playing yeah. those games and the other one that i'm tying into this is skate because after tony hawk um skate did come out and that game was once again just incredible and you also had the where you could create your own levels they had that in tony hawk too but i'm just mentioning that in general was incredible to kind of make your own crazy like um, skate parks and stuff and have your friends try them out yeah. and then a um, tag along honorable mention in this is the matt hoffman bmx series so you had um tony hawk for skateboarding if you like doing bmx bikes that was your game for that both of those i played a shit ton of um next which kind of pained me that it wasn't on like my um other list was the Halo series um, because it did kind of come after where we did our cutoff. Um, new generation, uh, if you don't remember or don't know about uh, LAN cables and basically having <laughs> five, um, four systems in a basement with four TVs, um, four controllers each, and having a split screen, like that was my childhood. Like that was what we had parties. I, we would have all my friends would come over we'd all have teams of four we'd have our tv we'd sit there and we would play um and that was halo one and two um little fun fact you could hack your xbox and hook it up to your pc and trick the xbox and basically to think that you were playing um with someone sitting right next to you uh but that was like the heyday of like super cheating you would spawn in the other team would just have rockets shooting at you as soon as you spawn <laughs> so it really wasn't all that fun uh, next is the need for speed I played a ton of need for speed from the beginning all the way up I kind of fell away from it uh, in recent times it's not something like when I um, unfortunately as you get older and you become an adult your time kind of like you don't have enough time to play like the games that you really want to um, so this is kind of one that I was like it's not really something like when I want to play, like there's certain types of games I want to play. Hack and Slash, RPG, and First Person Shooters are the three my go-to kind of games. Um, next is going to be the Fable series. I loved the first two. The third one wasn't the greatest, but the first two Fables, and yes, every time I played these games, I ended up becoming evil. I'm sorry, like, I just killed everybody. <laughs> like, I was always the bad guy in it. I would try my hardest, uh, but then I would see someone that would have something, and I'm like, you know what, screw this. I'm killing this guy. I'm taking <laughs> it. So I always would end up um, playing evil. But those games were incredible. Like, the progression of, like, building your character and advancing and the storytelling and everything. And then this isn't an honorable mention, this is my number six because I can't put it as an honorable mention. It has to have a number to it. It was on this guy's list, and that is Marvel Ultimate Alliance. Um, it's a solid number six. I Earlier I said I love RPGs. I love like um, hack and slash, and this is like a blend of that. And then you add superheroes to it, and then you also add that you could play co-op. I mean, this game was incredible. Yeah, so. for sure. Yeah, absolutely. I, I can agree with, I played most of those that you just named as well. One other quick one I'll throw out there that I forgot, Omnisha Warlords from Capcom. Mm -hmm. I played the heck out of that game, and my boy Jesse, I know he's oh, going to be yeah. 
agreeing and nodding right now as he watches this. I'll or, throw or, one other one out because we were talking about this one the other day, and that's Dynasty Warriors. Yes. I mean, we could literally just yeah, sit here yeah, and just yeah, throw out games. Because, so, because, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Let's get to it. Let's get to it. Okay. All right. I promise. No more. <laughs> All right. Man, this top five is hard. Okay. So at number five um, is sort of a more recent game. Not 2013 to be exact. Um, when I played this game, it literally... I couldn't have expected how big of an impact it would have on me. And if I had to rate the top five video games of just all time, it may it may even fall into this category just because of how good, how emotional, and how um, just well done this game is. And that is The Last of Us. Um, honestly, there is no other comparison in terms of what is the best game to be um, on just a single console. Of course, PlayStation is the only system that this game has come out for. It's a PlayStation exclusive. Um, I didn't play this game right away. And just from word of mouth, I know my brother played it, some friends. They said, you have to play The Last of Us. And when I did, I literally... Um, didn't stop playing it until I beat it. Like I just stayed up and played it. I couldn't put the controller down. The story is top notch. Mm -hmm. um, the acting is some of the best I've ever seen in a video game. The intensity, it'll have your heart racing basically in a world where was plagued by this this virus this outbreak where people are mutating um, turning into zombie like um, figures and then full on creatures um, and you play as a character named Joel who something terrible happens in the beginning I won't spoil it um, he ends up meeting this young girl Ellie and basically he's given the job to sort of transport her to the other side of the country because she may be our only hope for survival without getting into too much spoiler territory the connection that these two characters forge um, the the places that you go to including pittsburgh is is one of the places you go to in this game um, the zombie capital of the world yes <laughs> and uh i knew that was coming <laughs> and uh it's just it's so beautifully written well done the gameplay mechanics they still hold up so well today i couldn't be more excited for the sequel which unfortunately mm -hmm. got pushed back to may instead of february that's a little disappointing but it is what it is but yeah, number five, um, I, The Last of Us is not just one of the best games after 2000, but it is one of the best games ever made. And if you don't own a PlayStation or you've never gotten a chance to try it, I would highly suggest going and getting it before the sequel comes out because I've never met someone who was disappointed by this game. It's won so many awards. Mm -hmm. It is just a fantastic video game. I definitely agree with that, but um, I was just sitting here thinking just real quick. He said it would be on his all-time greatest games, like, ever. I kind of want to do that video, but I don't know if I can. Yeah. I don't think that's possible. Yeah. Like, that would be, like, yeah, yeah. I would end up in a mental asylum <laughs> trying to, like... <laughs> yeah, break it down, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, uh, for my number five is... So, this one... Um, when I was putting the list together and we were doing the honorable mentions, I threw out all rules to an extent. <laughs> so this is another where I cheated. It's a two-parter. I'm just going to put them together, and that's Destiny 1 and 2. Mm. Um, I love um, loot grab games, and that's basically what you get here. It's first-person shooter mode. Um, this game, I the first one blew me away. It had a slow start, and then they had some updates and stuff, and it really just kind of grabs you. Um, the story, the lore, the graphics, um, the gameplay, everything. The characters, you can play as the Titan, the Warlock, or the Hunter. Um, I was to the point where like, I was one of those guys that played all three. Like, I wasn't just playing one. I leveled each one up. Um, I did the missions for each one, and that carried over into Destiny 2. Same thing. Like, um, I played all three. I couldn't just play one. Like, I had to get everything for all of them. Um, just the different, like, guns you could get, the different armor pieces and everything. And um, the multiplayer was even incredible. The co-op, that was the other thing that I really liked was um, it kind of geared, you had to play co-op. You could kind of solo it, but there's a lot of things like the, um, the raids and um, that kind of stuff where you kind of had to have a team. It wasn't just pure run and gun, shoot everything. You had tactics, there's um, little puzzle type things in the game. Just such an amazing series. So yeah, my number five was Destiny uh, franchise, I guess you would say. Yeah, I never was big into Destiny. I played the first one, and I enjoyed it for a little while, and then I, it, it didn't stick with me, but I, I realize everyone that does play Destiny just 
absolutely loves it. So it's a very, very popular game for a reason. Um, my number four may be a lot of people's number one. Hmm. Um, and because of the popularity of this game, the following that it has, my number four is Skyrim. Um, hmm. Skyrim is probably held by a lot of people as maybe the greatest RPG of all time. Um, when I first got my hands on Skyrim, it was another game that I just couldn't quit playing. Um, I didn't put the types of hours into it as a lot of people in this world have. I mean, there is just, you can read online or just see in general or just even hear maybe from yourself or your own friends um, the types of hours that I've, I've, I've had conversations with people and they have named the amount of hours they put into Skyrim and it will blow you away. I put a lot of hours into Skyrim, um, which is why it's making my top five because it is just so fun. It's really endless what you can do, the order that you can do it. The customization is top notch. Of course, there was always a lot of bugs and glitches with Skyrim, but I mean, a lot of that was part of the fun. Um, the creatures you faced off against, the loot that you got. I mean, they had missions from and things to do from all across the board, and it, it could just serve everyone's appetite. I mean, they had w missions with werewolves and mm -hmm. vampires for horror fans. I mean, it was a pain in the ass when you got turned into either one of those. Werewolf so, wasn't so like, that bad. Yeah, I the hated werewolf, the yeah, the vampire one was such a pain. Oh, yeah, and it's just the world was just so expansive. There was it was beautiful. The facing off the dragons, the learning mm -hmm. of the powers. You know, Fus Roda. I mean, <laughs> everything in this game just screamed just addiction and and wanting to play over and over again and there were so many times i'd just be in the middle of playing and i would just get excited at the thought of just starting a brand new game and creating a brand new character and doing things completely different because yeah. and and i remember even you know months into playing this game and having hours and hours in i would just stumble across some little place on the map and i would yeah. find these little series of missions that i had never done mm -hmm. never and if i didn't just stumble into this little hut i would have never have found yeah. them and they would lead you on a whole series of missions that you're like, I can't believe that this this is right here in this game, in this spot, and there's all this hidden content, and of course there was a ton of DLC. Skyrim is still to this day one of the best RPGs, in my opinion, ever made. Mm -hmm. um, of course we all know there is a sequel to Skyrim in development. Hopefully it's not too far off. I have a feeling it'll probably be a next-gen game, which I'm fine oh, with that. Right. Yeah. Um, and I can't wait. Uh, Skyrim is just an awesome, fun time. Um, and I'm sure most of you have, have played it. So, But yeah, my number four is Skyrim. All right. All right, so uh, my number four. So every so often there's a game that comes out that um, you get told to play. Because I didn't play it as soon as it came out. Um, and this guy right here told me to play this game. And I was like, ah, I don't know, maybe. So I eventually kind of broke down and I played it. And it floored me. It also made his list and he pretty much... Stole my thunder and went over everything, uh, and that is The Last of Us. Um, easily one of the greatest zombie games in general. Um, the other thing that I like that he didn't really touch on is the fact that it's not just zombies you're up against. Yeah. There's other people. There's gangs. Yeah. That kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. So, like, there's just so much to this game. I don't want to go into too much detail. I'll tell you a quick story. So, like I said, I um, just recently started playing it. And I was on the, I had my headset on, and I was in um, game chat with uh, his brother. And I'm playing. I just started the game. And <laughs> if you've never played the game, this isn't really much of a spoiler because you know zombies come. So you're playing as this little girl. And I go down the stairs. Next thing I know, this zombie runs in through this like stained sliding like glass sliding door, glass yeah. door. I, I was like, holy shit! I jumped. I and like you, you know, I'm a, a huge yeah. horror fan. I've played. I'm not a jumpy person. And his brother Colby can vouch. He was like, what? I was like, I can't believe I literally just jumped at a game. Like it <laughs> caught me off guard. Yeah. Like, but after that, like the game, it, it really is one of the greatest games. Yeah. And it's it's one of those like. Um, I sometimes feel bad playing on PlayStation because some of the exclusive games that PlayStation get, like I wish everybody, like could play. Like this is one of those games. Yeah. That, like it's enough, honestly. To if you don't own a PlayStation, I would honestly suggest going out and buying one just to play this game. Like from the cinematics to the gameplay, mm -hmm. 
it, it features everything that you could want in a game, and it's scary, it's emotional, it's sad. And it's, it's one that you have to, like, it's, yeah, it's, and it's one of those, like, survival horror. It's not where you're going to just, like, oh, I got a gun, let me just unload. Like, you yeah. have to think, you have to, like, throw stuff to, like, decoy. You can't kill every little thing. You have to try to, like... And, and I don't think there's ever been a game that made me care more about the characters mm -hmm. than The Last of Us, honestly. Like, when you're playing it, it's like you're watching a movie yeah. unfold in front of you, and you, every time something bad's about to happen to these characters, you will care about it. But, yeah, we could talk forever about yeah. The Last of Us. So I'm glad it made your list. I was wondering if it would, and that's awesome that it did. Okay, so my number three is from 2005, and this game also came out as an exclusive to a particular console which was very very daring to do so but it paid off in huge numbers because it was the highest selling game on that console for quite some time and that is Resident Evil 4. Uh, when Resident Evil 4 released it was only on GameCube and I remember me and my brother standing in line to get this game um, and oh my goodness this is yeah. the game that really it, it deterred a little bit away from the survival horror. It was still full on survival horror, but it also added this sort of action concept to Resident Evil, but it didn't take it overboard like Resident Evil 5 did. Resident Evil 4 really changed the landscape for the series. Um, of course, you played as Leon Kennedy, this time over in Europe, trying to find the president's daughter who went missing. And in it, instead of the over-the-top camera angles and kind of wonky camera angles you're used to in the first three Resident Evils, this time you had your over-the-shoulder, almost semi-first-person gameplay. Great mechanics. Mm -hmm. The story was phenomenal at the time. The graphics were top-notch and still don't look bad today. New inventory system, tons of weapons, new creatures. It was the first Resident Evil in the main series to not deal with full-on zombies. Um, but... Man, the moments in this game is what make it so special. I mean, who can forget early on when you first walk into this village and you get attacked by all of these villagers with pitchforks and guys with bags on their head with chainsaws yeah. and you're trying to survive. I mean, there's creatures under the water that come up from like like almost like a Loch Ness type thing. There's amazing boss battles, great acting, voice acting in the game. It's so intriguing, so fun to play. It's got a huge replayability factor from secrets to DLC um, collectibles. This game really took the world by storm and it brought in a whole new audience to Resident Evil that had never played them before, especially once it got onto the other consoles as well. It won Game of the Year in many different faucets of, of game uh, reviewing organizations. It was IGN's Game of the Year. Um, it won more awards than any Resident Evil to come after it. There are a lot of people out there that hold this as their favorite game of all time. Mm -hmm. It's it's phenomenal. I, if, if I asked my brother, he probably, he may say this is his favorite game of all time. I'd have to ask him just to be certain. But Resident Evil 4, um, honestly, the amount of times playing Survival. this game... Yeah. This is the one that introduced yes. survival. Yep. Right? Yeah. yeah, where you yep. would survive wave-based rounds of yep. enemies. Um, there, there there was just so much going on with this game. Um, it couldn't make my list. Uh, the Resident Evil series in general is my favorite, but it, it's just Resident Evil 4 after the 2000s. This is the one that really changed the yeah. landscape, so there was no way it wasn't going to make it. So yeah, my uh, number three, Resident Evil 4. All right. Yeah, that, <coughs> I definitely played a lot of that game. That. Um, so keeping with the theme of this uh, this guy stealing my thunder, <laughs> uh, number three is Elder Scrolls Skyrim. Um, wow, I was thinking that might be his number one. So. No, uh, my number one's probably gonna my, it's probably gonna shock you. Hmm. Um, so Elder Scrolls, like he said, is probably one of the greatest like traditional RPGs. Um, just the like massiveness of this game, the side missions. <laughs> your main missions, the character progression, um, learning new skills, leveling up those skills, kind of creating like an actual like character and you could kind of focus on certain aspects of what to like, if you wanted to be an archer, there was different things that you could learn for being an archer. You could do mixed classes and stuff. Um, and just, you know, like he said, the story, everything about this game was just perfection. I'm one of those people that put and obscene yeah, how amount. many hours did you put in there John I, I, I'm not sure it's, it's 100 times what <laughs> yeah really it's up there because like when it first came out I played a ton of it and it's one of those games that like when I'm running out of like uh, play, like I don't feel like playing 
first person shooters or I don't feel like doing this like there's really nothing new out that I want to play this is one of the games that I'll go back to and play again and again I really hope the sequel. Yeah, is I do too. Like, even could like you the, imagine a co-op. Yeah, the co- oh, yeah. I mean, so even nice. like the VR um, version was pretty cool. Yeah. Um, but once again, it was basically just the actual game, but you yeah. could play it in virtual reality. It did it did a really good job of um, doing that. Um, but I don't I don't know. Like this game is like it would be. This and Diablo are probably the two games that I put the most time into easily yeah. um and so believe it or not i put more time in diablo than any than every other game that i've ever played combined probably oh wow and with skyrim in that that says something to wow me. so that's crazy um yeah sorry to steal the thunder <laughs> but yeah i mean there's a reason why these some of these games are on both of our list i mean and we don't go over each other's list with each other we keep them as a surprise so it's not like we're, we're collaborating on this so it just shows you how good these games must be if two people who we we only met each other a couple of years ago so we played these games not knowing each other so it's not like we were playing the same games. And it was love back at first then. sight yep. <laughs> <laughs> um, so my number two now that that uh <laughs> you know that, that just happened there uh my number two uh is a game a little game that just happened to drop in 2001 and i don't know it may have spawned some success i guess in 2001 this game came out bought it went home put it on and within about i don't know 15 minutes I knew that I was going to be addicted to this game. And it completely floored me. It changed the landscape of gaming. It became not only my, but all of my friends' favorite game. It was something you talked about with your friends at school. And, of course, it did spawn sequels that, you know, would be... Some of them would be better. But this is the one that started it all. And that is Grand Theft Auto 3. Mm -hmm. When Grand Theft Auto 3 dropped... I just remember playing this game and just thinking to myself, this is the greatest thing. I, I mean, I have the freedom to do this. I can do that. I can run over people with my car. I can do whatever. Um, the voice acting, the missions, the, the wars between the group you're in and Chinatown and all. I mean, it was just you getting to do missions, hit jobs, putting people in trunks of cars and disposing of the bomb. <laughs> this sounds a little corrupt that I'm enjoying talking about this so much, but it was just way beyond its time. And like I said, you know, like Grand Theft Auto V, I think is a better game. Obviously the games would get better, the more technology, the more open world they could become. But this game, literally, I still get excited thinking about it today of just how much fun, how much of an open world this was, what you could do, the customization from cars and everything, the, the guns, the, the voice acting, some great actors in this game. Grand Theft Auto 3 literally changed, as I said before, the landscape of gaming. So many games tried to model mm -hmm. after the Grand Theft Auto series. After that, um, Saints Row, in my opinion, is the one that came really close in terms of how well they did. But Grand Theft Auto 3 is number two on my list for a reason, because of the amount of time I put into this game, how revolutionary it was, how fun it was, um, and... You know, I still play GTA games to this day because of it, and man, it's it's a game that had a huge impact on me, and I'm sure a lot of you as yeah. well. So my number two, Grand Theft Auto 3. Yeah, it definitely didn't make my list, but I definitely put a lot of time into that game too. Um, and one of my favorite things to do in that game, I like a lot of like survival wave-based things, so I would basically do as much bad shit as I could, <laughs> yeah. get my like police Never rating up, up, and yeah. then find a place and see how long I yep. could survive. It's just like, a the onslaught of, of like, yeah, fun, yeah. There's so many different things you could do in that game. But. Yeah, absolutely. Alright, so my number two is a PlayStation 4 exclusive. Hmm. Um, came out recently. Uh, came out in 2018. And... Um, for the longest time, the best superhero game was the Batman Arkham, like, series. The first two of that. Third one, I kind of, uh, it was good, but they kind of did a couple things that I really didn't care for. Like, you had to use the vehicle a little bit too much. Um, so, like, I mean, that was hands down the greatest game until I played this game. 
And this is literally the greatest superhero game, in my opinion, and that is the Spider-Man PS4 exclusive mm. game. It blew me away from the way they built the city, the missions, the side quests, how many different things you could do, the different suits, the abilities of each suit, um, the controls, like when you're swinging through the city, one of the biggest gripes, like I love a lot of the other Spider-Man games, like Spider-Man Maximum Carnage on Sega, like those were amazing games, but you could literally just shoot your web and just swing wherever. This, you have to kind of like, have something to actually tether to you have to give thought you can't just swing out of things and um mentioning skyrim earlier if you ever played that map is huge and you would get these things called loading screens after you would go so far or if you would try to just like um fast travel to that point travel in that game was probably the most annoying thing about that game so you have the entire city of new york in spider-man and you'll be on one side and your mission is say on the whole other side of the city normally that would be like oh, really i gotta travel all the way. it's fun because of how like fluid the swinging is like it doesn't feel like you're traveling that far because you can basically web sling the entire way there and the uh, mechanics of the web slinging is just incredible the fighting um, the combos, the, um, the fighting mechanics in this game are incredible. And I've said in other videos, my two favorite superheroes, DC is Batman. So that's why that was kind of like my favorite for the longest time. Spider-Man is my favorite in Marvel. So it's really not a surprise that this game kind of, it nudged a little bit just because of like, it was in a, they had old school villains and stuff that you fought. The boss battles were incredible. And when this game came out, I was a little like, oh, they're introduced because um, Insomniac is the company that made it and they made their own storyline. I was like, oh, I don't know. Like, I'm kind of, I don't like someone else just coming up with something. But the storyline, the character that they created was incredible. Um, this, like, the other side character is Doc Ock, who is one of my favorite villains. Um, his whole, like, um, progression to become Doc Ock, how they do that, the story. This is one of those, like he said, those games that you feel for the characters in this game. Um, it's one that I keep going back to um, to kind of finish some of the other things. And I just like web slinging around and just beating up on like thugs and stuff. It's easily one of the greatest just games in general. This one would probably be a contender for one of my all time greatest games. So awesome. Yeah. I have not played it, but from everything he's talked about, it seems like a really fun game. Um, all right, so that brings us to number one. Well, it's no surprise um, for anyone who knows me that since 2007, there's been one game series in general that every year I put more time into than any series. <laughs> it's not even close. Um, for the first handful of years that it started releasing... Um, the Sims, right? The Sim, you just gave it away. <laughs> um, so the, every year when it was coming out, going to the midnight releases in the first handful of years, I held those at the same um, emotional joy that I held the holidays throughout the season because midnight releases for me and my friends were a holiday. It was a hectic one, and we'd be standing out in the cold for about 12 hours, but we were that excited. And every year when you got announced the next one in the series your anticipation would just be at a whole other level. And of course, the series I'm talking about is the Call of Duty series. The Call of Duty series is my most beloved series, especially in the first person uh, shooter genre. Now, being as that we're limp picking not series here, but games, the one that I'm going to pick for my number one, the one that has the most emotion, uh, emotional attachment for me, is 2009's Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2. Um, this yeah. still today is my favorite game in the entire series. Um, I have so many memories of this game. Um, from the moment it came out, literally played this Call of Duty from the moment it came out in November all the way up until the next November when Call of Duty Black Ops released. Um, I was literally still playing it on the eve of Black Ops release. That's how fun this game was. 
everyone that I knew that played video games was playing this game. Nobody wasn't playing Call of Duty. Even if you weren't a traditional first-person shooter player, everyone was on Modern Warfare 2 because of how fun and addicting it was from the customization with guns and classes to the, in my opinion, the best guns they've ever had in Call of Duty come from Modern Warfare 2. They were balanced well. Some of the best maps ever created in Modern Warfare 2. The new addition of kill streaks, not just having your traditional three, but being able to set three from a whole list of kill streaks. New features, an amazing campaign. Spec Ops was fun as well, but the multiplayer is really what drove yeah. it home. And there was never a time of day or night. And I used to stay up all night playing this game. I would stay up till five, six in the morning, go to bed for two hours, set my alarm, get up, and continue playing. I missed way more college classes than I should have. Don't recommend that to anyone um, playing this game, even playing it. Coming home in between breaks of classes, I'd have like an hour break. I'd come home just to play for an hour and then rush back up. That's how much um, I wanted to play. There was never a time of day when someone wasn't playing, morning or night. When I got on, there was always people to jump in with on your friends list, and you were afraid to get off and take a break because you were afraid you were going to lose your spot because when <laughs> six people filled up, that was it, unless yeah. you wanted to play Ground War. Um so many memories of 2, 3 in the morning playing Search and Destroy with my friends. Just intense as if it was just the start of my day. Just leaned forward with the controller. Everyone cared about their kill-death ratio. Everyone was trying to do challenges and get... Um, all camos were unlocked by headshots back then. So when you had gold camo, you were a badass because that meant that you spent a lot of time with that gun getting headshots. Um, still to this day, it's... Not to brag, but it was my highest kill death ratio ever in a Call of Duty was Modern Warfare 2. It was over. This guy's not good at headshots, so I'm just gonna throw that out there. It is true. <laughs> but um it it, it, it was uh, I think my I finished on Modern Warfare two with a kill death ratio of like two sixty. I mean it was it was up there, it was crazy. Um and I everyone still wants this game remade today. I sort of do, but sort of don't because you know, just like with most remakes, it'll be fun for a little while, but if it's the same exact game, there's probably going to be more problems with it now yeah. than what you had back then, and it won't, it'll won't. it be fun for a little while, but it'll just be a nostalgia thing, so I think they should maybe leave it in the past and leave with all those great memories. Of course, this game wasn't perfect. There were a lot of glitches and bugs. Who can ever forget the javelin glitch where if you shot the ground with the javelin, it killed everyone around you. The care package glitch where when you pulled out the smoke grenade to throw and signal the care package, instead of throwing it, you would just hold onto it and you'd run at super speed and just <laughs> knife people. There were glitches you could hide in the maps, places you shouldn't get to. Yeah. This was the age of the modder, uh, modded controllers. You know, There weren't scuffed controllers and things like that. So when you had a modded controller, it was basically like illegal in the gaming community but a lot of people had them so they'd be using single fire guns and <laughs> shooting them full speed um, and most importantly maybe uh, you can't go without mentioning the lobbies maybe the most toxic lobbies in video game history <laughs> but my yeah. goodness were they fun sometimes the most fun was the lobby before the game because you and your friends were always just fighting and arguing with everyone else sometimes you started it sometimes you didn't it of course today you can't really play um the show off the lobbies for modern 2 because of the things that were said i mean some people would probably be in prison today with the things that people <laughs> said to one another yeah um it was just so fun all the way around yeah it, there's there's everybody's mics are broken jessica just her mic sh can't hear anybody nobody can hear anybody <laughs> your clan sucks <laughs> I can only hear dad and I can only hear dad and you. Are you fucking <laughs> fucking good? Really on my screen? I'm shooting a mil. Um, uh, just a, another quick story. The night Modern Warfare 2 came out, we went and lined up at GameStop. My myself, my wife. Obviously, we weren't married then, but my. Um, my brother, a couple friends, we stood in line. Uh, we got there at GameStop because we like to go early around like 10.30 a.m. It was cold. We stood outside all day. We were the second group there. There was actually a group in front of us. Um, by the time it got to be about 9 o'clock at night, the line literally went through the entire plaza, weaved through the parking lot, and down into the next plaza. They were doing contests, giving out posters, all these things. Finally, when midnight hit and we all got our hands on the game, we ran to my car, all like screaming. We were excited. I mean, you'd think we were five-year-old kids. We got in the car. We zoomed home. 
we came in, got inside the house. I had three TVs set up in my room at the time, one for me, one for my wife, and then my buddy Cody was playing there too. So we were all three set up in my room. My brother's room was right next to mine, so he was set up in there. We all got in, got the game loaded up. We were so excited to play. We had just stood in line for over 12 hours. <laughs> we go into the first map, um, and as soon as the countdown started, we're like, oh my God, here we go, here we go. We took about three steps forward. All of a sudden, I could see in the left corner of my screen, it said uh, that my brother, I think at that time his name was Ghost We Became, but I can't remember. It just said that he was disconnected from the lobby, and I could hear him in the other room screaming bloody murder, <laughs> and I was like, what is going on? And at this time, we all played on Xbox 360, and for those of you who remember, yeah. there was the most, um, literally the, the biggest dread heart pounding moment Man. you could have as a 360 player was getting the red ring of death which is when your xbox just had a fatal error where it broke yeah and you would have a red ring on the power source well my brother comes running into my room yelling i got the red ring of death i got the red ring of death so after standing in line for like 13 14 hours he came home and in the first game he got the red ring of death and did not get to play call of duty opening night the next day he did luck out because my grand bought him an xbox elite <laughs> but um, I just remember him sorry Colby but I remember him crying and it was just uh, I felt bad for him but um, yeah Modern Warfare 2 my favorite all time shooter of all of, of, of all time and the Call of Duty series in general no game series has meant more <coughs> unfortunately there's been not so great years in Call of Duty as well but Modern Warfare 2 still stands the time as the most fun I've ever had with a shooter and the most uh, memories I ever have playing a video game with friends so my number one Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 yeah, that definitely is the standout uh, Call of Duty game. So, my number one. Um, so every so often, um, a game comes out and you're like, you're pretty excited to play it. It's brand new. It's not part of a franchise. It's never been seen before. And you're kind of like, eh, I'll give it a try. Um, that's what my number one is came out I was like all right I'm gonna give this game a try and I was a floored I loved this game it did get an expansion and the um, developers said after that expansion they are done with it kind of crushed me they there are rumors that they are coming out with a uh, sequel to it which I'm excited for I hope they really do um, this game uh, from the story the graphics the controls um, the customization the getting and like finding items to craft different things the monsters literally everything I've been telling this guy to play it for so long and he just won't um, and that is Horizon Zero Dawn um, the reason it is at number one is just for the impact that it had on me because like I said it wasn't like a franchise game it wasn't something that like you've seen before and just getting into it from like the smallest little graphics of running through the snow and seeing your footprints the controls the combos using a bow and arrow using like a staff um, basically what this is is um, apocalyptic apocalyptic type kind of game um, where the monsters that you fight are these robots but the robots aren't your typical like humanoid type they take the form of like different animals um so you have like deer that you can kind of like don't really attack you as much and then you have like wolves and then you get into big like they have like dinosaur type ones that are like t-rexes you have raptor ones you have big like um buffalo type and they just did a really good job of like the they actually act like the animal that they are but a little bit smarter they track you um, it's not just one that you're gonna run through and just kind of shoot everything you kind of have to have some tactics and the thing that really kind of grabbed me was the story um, because like it's such, like it kind of progresses through you're like I don't really understand what's going on and then it all kind of ties together um, and just the expansion and I don't know, like this game, like I, like the open world, it's one of the, you don't really feel like it's that big, but it is huge. Um, and it was just the fact, like I've never, like, I never played, a, it was the impact, like I said before, the impact, like I put it in and it was one of those, I could not stop playing because of how immersive and how just incredible, like the, um, 
the landscapes, the map, your character, the villagers, like the NPCs actually like were dynamic. They weren't just like, duh, duh, yeah. like the, it, it really like the entire game, not just like the cinema, like the cinematography, like the movie scenes were beautiful. The rest of it, like when you're walking through these towns, like it felt like you were playing a movie the entire time. Like hands down, like it's my number one because it blew me away, like out of nowhere. So that would probably be like that's my best game that's come out in the past ten years. Like it's that, like it's that good. But it's one of those I feel like I I hold it in such a regard because of the type of game. If you're not a big like kind of like The Witcher, Skyrim, that sort of type of game, you might not really care for it. But hmm. yeah, I definitely was not expecting that as your pick. And as he said, it's a game I've never tried. I remember when it came out. It just I don't know. It wasn't didn't look like something I'd want to play. But maybe I'll have to try it at some point just for how he describes it. It does make it sound like a really fun game. So I wasn't expecting that one. But now for some more honorable mentions. No, I'm just kidding. We could do this all day. This was a fun yet very difficult list to make. So we are definitely cur curious for you guys in the comments to give your. Oh, just real quick, not to not to break him. Horizon Zero Dawn should have been game of the year. When this game came out, this was 2017. If you guys remember what game won Game of the Year in 2017, that was a legacy game. And what I mean by a legacy game, this is a game that has been out forever. It was the latest adaption of Zelda Breath of the Wild was the only reason that Horizon Zero Dawn didn't get. It was beat by the nostalgic and the fact that it was Zelda. That's the only reason. Don't get me wrong, Breath of the Wild was an amazing game, but I feel that solely because of Zelda is why it beat it. And that's my bent. <laughs> well, yeah, guys, <laughs> let us know your top five games after the 2000, from 2000 and up, because we're definitely curious to hear if you agree with any of our picks, if you disagree with any of our picks, and of course, as always, please leave a like and subscribe um, to our channel if you haven't already. We love doing these lists. It's a lot of fun to see what we, uh, you know, what we each pick in these categories and we have a lot more lists coming along the way and if you have any ideas for lists for us to do please put those in the comments as well as always guys thank you so much for watching now showing with john and cam we'll catch you next time